A new study published in the Review of General Psychology looked at the extent to which humans may have evolved with a propensity to break up in relationships. Uh, so the first thing that the paper went over was trying to establish that uh, breaking up relationships, or mate ejection as they call it, is a human universal, meaning it's something that is found uh, with a reasonable amount of regularity in all human cultures. Uh, so of course divorce is common in modern society. Some estimates put the divorce rate as high as 50%. Uh, remarriage has been common historically. This is both because divorce happened as well as because spouses often died. Uh, and divorce is extremely common in modern uh, primitive tribes. So because of this, breakups may have been common in the ancestral environment. And there may have been differences in how many children people had, which related to how likely they were to break relationships up. And so this gets down to the question of if humans do have an evolved propensity to break up relationships, is that because it was adaptive? So there are some reasons to think that it might have been adaptive. Uh, mate ejection may have allowed people to acquire more reproductively valuable mates. So in the case of women, this might mean getting a male with more resources than your previous mate. In the case of men, this might mean getting a woman who is more fertile than your previous mate. It's worth noting that this obviously applies in a monogamous context, but it also applies in a polygamous context. If you are a male and you have a set amount of resources, there are only so many women that you can afford to wife. Uh, because of that, you might want to dump one in order to get another who is more uh, fertile. Similarly, if you are a woman in a polygamous context, you may want to leave your current husband in order to mate with a new husband who will devote more resources to you, either because he has more resources in total, or because you will rank higher among his wives than you do among your current husband's wives. A uh, mate ejection may have also been a rational response on the part of males to paternal uncertainty. Paternal uncertainty refers to the fact that in prehistoric times, uh, it could have happened that women had children who the husband thought was his, but who actually were not. That is, he could have been raising and devoting tons of his resources to children that were not biologically related to him. Obviously, this would have been a disaster from the standpoint of evolution because he would have been devoting all of those resources to a genetic dead end. Uh, so one solution to the problem if you're a male and you think that your children might not actually be yours is to simply break up the relationship, leave the mother and the child, start a new relationship with another woman and mate with her. It's important to note though that at this point there isn't a lot of hard evidence on this. Uh, mate ejection may just be a, a byproduct of another feature of our psychology. Uh, it might not be an adaption at all. Uh, the paper also uh, tries to suggest that mate ejection may be connected to serotonin. Now, being in love is associated with activity in the brain's so-called reward systems, and these brain regions are largely fueled by the neurotransmitters dopamine and norepinephrine. Serotonin, another neurotransmitter, inhibits the activity of dopamine and norepinephrine. Uh, because of this, you might think that if being in love requires the activity of dopamine and norepinephrine, and serotonin inhibits that activity, that serotonin might therefore inhibit being in love. And in support of this is the fact that SSRIs, which are a very common antidepressant, which uh, increase the activity of serotonin in the brain, uh, decrease how attractive people are to their partners. Uh, they also talk about individual variation in mate ejection. Obviously, some people are more likely to break up in a relationship than other people are. Some people stay in relationships that are obviously horrible. Other people break up relationships over and over and over again, even though there's nothing seriously wrong with any of them. These would represent two different tales of a spectrum. We don't know much about the causes of individual variation in mate ejection, but we do know that twin studies suggest that people's likelihood of getting divorced is about 35% heritable, meaning that about 35% of the differences between people in terms of their likelihood to get divorced is explainable by genetic differences between those people. So in conclusion, there's not a lot of evidence about this topic, but hopefully this uh, review article will spur more research in the future so that evolutionary psychology can come up with some more hard facts about this. Uh, and it's also important to note that this has nothing to do with whether or not people should or should not break up. Uh, evolutionary psychology doesn't really tell us anything about how we should live our lives. All this means is that it is possible that people who broke up 10,000 years ago or more may have had more children than people who did not break up as often. Obviously, there's no reason to think that, oh, if people broke up and had more children 20,000 years ago, then I should probably break up the relationship I'm in right now. So that's basically all there is to this article. Uh, if you found this interesting and want to hear 
a YouTube video about a new scientific study that comes out on a daily basis, or at least Monday through Saturday, then consider subscribing to Daily Data.